What's up, guys? How are you all doing out there? Hopefully you're doing wonderful. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up your own DocuWiki. I'm gonna show you how to install it. I'm gonna show you how to format it and some basics on how to manage your own internal wiki hosted on none other than the latest version of Ubuntu server 22.04.1 at the time of this recording. So briefly, just wanna cover a couple things about DocuWiki. It's basically like having your own Wikipedia hosted locally on your server where you have full control over it. It's an open source software, obviously it's free. It's a super valuable, really cool piece of software. And if you are a small business owner like myself, it's basically invaluable for having documentation for your clients. Okay, I have clients and each client has tons of information specific to them. You know, how many access points do they have? What servers do they have? Uh, what are the host names? What are the IP addresses? What firewalls do they have? What locations? What are the addresses? What are phone numbers? Who's the point of contact? Now, for each one of my clients, they can have their own specific wiki page that not only myself, but my employees can also sign into and we can all access a centralized documentation. I was about to say database, but that's another interesting thing about DocuWiki, it doesn't use databases. Go read about it on their website. The engineers have designed it like this on purpose. Um, they have some interesting reasoning as to why, not gonna get into that, but stay tuned and let's jump straight into getting this installed. All right, let's go ahead and jump straight into this. On the right side, I have my DocuWiki installation steps. And on the left side, I'm SSHing into my freshly installed Ubuntu server, which at the time of this recording is the latest version 22.04.1. So what I'm gonna do is begin copying and pasting commands. First step we're gonna do is sudo apt get update to update our server. Next up, we're going to install Apache and PHP. So I'm just copying my command, waiting for the update to finish here. And this shouldn't take too long, though it may depend on how fast your internet connection is. All right, so I'm just right clicking in the window here to paste in the next command and getting PHP and Apache installed. So as soon as that is done, I already have my next command copied and ready to go. Just pasted that in. We're gonna go ahead and start the Apache service and it's gonna have you authenticate. And we're gonna go ahead and enable the service. So I believe this makes the service persistent um, in that if your server was rebooted, it will start automatically. This command is gonna have you authenticate a few times, so just make sure you get your password typed in correctly. You wanna look out for that authentication complete in order to make sure everything was authenticated and completed successfully. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and install DocuWiki, and we're gonna CD to a certain directory, var www, and we're gonna hit it with the sudo wget command, which is gonna go ahead and download DocuWiki. Got a couple more commands in there to get it unpacked and installed. So again, I'm just copying and pasting, very easy, straightforward. Next up, we need to make a quick permission change. Just copy and paste this, and you should be good there. And we're gonna edit a config file. We're gonna change the document root in Apache to point to DocuWiki. So just go down to DocuWiki. I hit insert on my keyboard to type. You're gonna do DocuWiki and then do colon and WQ to write quit, which saves that file out inside Vim. Next up, we are going to edit another config file. So navigate down to the directory var www. And what we wanna do is change the allow override from none to all. So go ahead and hit insert on your keyboard, which will allow you to type in Vim. And we're gonna put all, do colon and WQ, once again to write quit. 
And now we're gonna go ahead and restart the Apache service since we made those changes. So just copy and paste that command. Next up, we are ready to hit the web interface. So go ahead and navigate to your server IP address followed by install.php. This will take you to the front end to finish out the rest of your configuration. This is pretty self-explanatory. Just put in the info that you wish. Wiki name, I did regional IT service dash wiki. Super user, essentially the admin account for your wiki. And you can put your name, your email address. Go ahead and create your admin password. You'll confirm your admin password. Now this is a closed off private wiki, so I'm gonna change the ACL policy to a closed wiki. And essentially it's only for folks who have a login to the wiki. That is how I'm setting mine up at this time. And I'm not going to do the um, anonymous data usage, so uh, that's your choice. I unchecked mine for now, go ahead and click save. And from there, we may delete the install.php file now that we've completed the web configuration. So just run this final command and get that bit cleaned up. Again, just copying and pasting that. There's no um, return feedback on that. You should just go straight back to the prompt. No news is good news there. It means that command ran successfully. Now we're just gonna navigate back to our server IP address. It defaults to port 80, so it'll bring you to the login page. Go ahead and sign in with the admin account you created. And ta-da, welcome to your own self-hosted internal wiki. All right, now that you have DocuWiki all installed, let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. I wanna show you the basics, creating pages, deleting pages, a little bit of formatting, creating users, and restricting what access they have to which wiki pages. If you're new to DocuWiki, this can be very confusing and maybe even a little intimidating at first if you're not familiar with a PHP because that is what your wiki uses for formatting. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Here I am at my DocuWiki page. Let's go ahead and sign in with the admin account you created during installation. Okay, so it takes you straight to your startup page. As you can see, there are no official pages created yet. Let's go ahead and click this pencil icon, click create this page. And what you're gonna do is create double bracket and you are going to create your first page, whatever you wanna title it. So in my case, let's say I wanted to make a new client page wiki, right? So let's say, I don't know, Kaiser Hospital is my new client. And we're gonna close that off with brackets. We're gonna do save on that. So what it does is creates a hyperlink to essentially your Kaiser Hospital client wiki page. It is red because there's no data on this page yet. But if we click the link, it takes us to the actual page, but we need to create the page by clicking the pencil icon, click and create this page. So we can make this a heading by just highlighting it, clicking this. Here's some of that PHP code that is added to make it a heading. We can do a link here. Uh, it's probably just like kaiser.com. And what we can do is just start building information on our client. The point of contact is Mr. Kaiser, so on and so forth. We can put a couple of emojis in here. I'm happy and I'm feeling cool. What we can also do is add in pictures by clicking this icon. I've already uploaded a picture into my media manager over here. It's easy, just drag and drop, upload, so on and so forth there. You can choose the size, I'll do small for now, insert. And again, this is the syntax for referencing a picture in your media manager. And we can do a preview on that and here's how it's gonna look so far. Very cool, creates a hyperlink for you. We can do save, go back to our main start page. If we do Kaiser Hospital, that is our wiki. 
and then you can continue to do the same thing over here. All right, so let's talk about page deletion. Let's say you no longer want this page. All you gotta do is click your wiki link, go to the page, edit the page, and delete the text, click save, and the page is gone. It's also removed from your sitemap, which is essentially your table of contents for your entire wiki. The link is still gonna be there, right? Unless you delete it and you can do save all right it's been fully removed okay so if we go back to the sitemap aha it lists all your wiki pages which is handy as well for navigation so what's also very powerful you can search your wiki so you can just type in tacos and see what comes up didn't i put taco tuesdays oh because i did tacos taco there it is taco bell taco tuesdays so this is obviously very powerful. You can search your wiki now over here in search. Under admin, you also have an extension manager and you can search and install template or um, plugins rather. I have a few going already. I'll leave you guys to it on that. I don't want this video to be super long, but it's a very powerful feature and extends the functionality, you know, as a plugin would do to your wiki. Okay guys, so lastly I wanted to show you a little bit on access control lists and creating new users and controlling which wikis they are able to access. So what we can do is head over to admin. Let's go to user manager to create a new user. And we're gonna do Bart, create a password, confirm a password, and fill in the rest of this info. He's just gonna be a member of user group. And then let's do add. Okay, so now I have two users. Let's head over to admin, go to access control list management, and I want Bart to only have access to Chipotle. Now I already set these up earlier, but let me delete these. Just so I can start over and show you. So what we can do is just go to permissions for, choose user, do Bart, select, and for Chipotle, none. Kaiser Hospital, none. Uh, I changed my mind. I want him to have only access to Taco Bell. So Leopard's none. The start page, he can have read access to Taco Bell. He can edit, save. All right, and now it's replicated the permissions down here. As you can see, Chipotle, none for Bart. Uh, Leopard's none for Bart, so on and so forth. Okay, so now I'm still logged in as admin, but I'm gonna go to Taco Bell, Taco Tuesdays, and I am going to sign in as Bart from another computer. So here I am on another computer. And if we navigate to my internal address for my wiki, my docu wiki, it brings you to the login page as expected. So let's sign in as Bart. And you can see he has read access to the start page, but if he tries to access Kaiser wiki, permission denied. Leopards wiki, permission denied. Chipotle, Chipotle, he still had access to Chipotle, really? Let's double check on that because he should not. Go back over to admin, access control list. Let's go to Chipotle, user, bar, select, none, update. Maybe that didn't save, not entirely sure. But let's go ahead and sign back out and sign back in as him again. Whoops. And Chipotle. Whoa, that is super weird. I don't know why he has... Why does he have access to Chipotle? Permissions for Bart, none. Chipotle. Oh, there's a conflict going on. Remember I added him to user? Uh-huh, getting a little lesson going on here, guys, on permissions. See, I made him a member. And if we access control is top down, right? So the top already allowed him. Well, you would think that it would be overridden, overridden by none because this is the last rule regarding Chipotle. So he's allowed here and then blocked here. 
So there's a conflict there. So in any case, not going to fiddle with it. Let's just simply remove him from the user group. Uh, how can we remove him? Oh, Bart, click his name. Groups, delete, save changes. All right, let's try it now. And let's go back to log out. Log back in just to refresh permissions. And Chipotle. <laughs> he still has access. Oh my goodness. What's going on here? Admin. Access control list. Chipotle Bart none. So he's not a member of the user group anymore. So what's what's the deal here? User manager. Oh, it didn't save. What the hell? Bart. Delete. Save changes. Updated users. Updated. User updated successfully, but it didn't. Interesting. Does he have to be a member of a group? He might have to belong to a group. So let's just say he's a part of the sales team. Okay. All right, so now let's try it again. Aha, there we go, permission denied. So there you have it. Your own internal hosted wiki on your server, ready to go, centralized information, easily accessible at your fingertips for you and your employees and your associates great for collaboration it's going to streamline processes make things easier who wants to put information about something in tons of word docs or excel documents that just gets counterintuitive when you can have your own wiki for free a reliable one a really cool one with tons of plugins and templates that you can use so i hope you guys liked this video if you have any questions comments or concerns please drop in the comment section below. Like the video, support us guys, support what we do here. I'm trying to grow this channel. Let me know what you wanna see and I'll see you in the next video.